let's add some clouds in foreground create a new solid name this foreground clouds fg clouds and place it above the file layer apply the cc particle world effect to it and change the physics to direction axis this time set the gravity back to zero so we need to change the direction to the direction of the smoke so we can head into the direction axis rollout here so this will be accessible if you are in the direction axis physics by default this is set to negative y axis that is this one so if you change the angle this rotates the simulation around the y axis but we need our simulation to be rotated around this axis that is the g axis set the y back to 0 and g axis to 1 so if you now rotate it there you go it's working so give it a value of 45 to match the previous simulation so let's increase the g radius to 3 mm, maybe to 2 also increase the y radius to fill the entire frame and also position it outside the frame here so move it left and move it down a bit something like this okay let's increase the lifespan to see the particles maybe value of 10 will be fine also move the layer all the way to the back so that we have more particles at the beginning itself there we go that's the simulation change the particle type to texture disk but we don't have any texture so let's create the cloud texture now duplicate the smoke of texture and pre-comb this leave all attributes and hit ok head into this comb and let's make the smoke puff look like a cloud so duplicate the smoke puff scale it down scale the duplicate too and position it like this so I'm basically duplicating the text and experimenting with the position to make it look more or less like a cloud. And finally, change the blending mode to screen to make it a little bit denser in the middle. Okay, here I am still trying to make it look like a cloud. Okay, that looks fine to me. So once you're done, go back to the foreground clouds layer and apply the texture that we just created to the particle. Let's rename this texture comp to cloud texture. Let's increase the particle size to maybe 15. Increase the depth size to 15 too. Make the particles white. Also decrease the particle count, maybe to a value of 0.1. Uh, also, let's change the particle type to texture faded disk to fix the tissue. <laughs> okay, uh, the clouds are rotating for no reason, so decrease the rotation speed all the way down to zero. Okay. Okay, let's improve the look. First, pre-compose the FG clouds layer. And pre comb it one more time, move all attributes, FG clouds comp. Head into this composition and let's duplicate it to make the clouds denser. Let's check this with the gray background. Okay, uh, there are too many clouds in the scene. So head into the FG clouds layer and Increase the Y radius to distribute the clouds further and thereby decreasing the number of clouds we see in the frame. Also decrease the size variation to maybe like 10. And change the transform mode to screen to make it even more denser. And there you go. Okay. Okay, we created white clouds, but we have a dark background. So Let's add a cause effect to the FG clouds layer and decrease the brightness all the way down. Maybe like here and maybe like this. Okay. Maybe 
maybe let's add some curves adjustment for the background layer. Let's decrease the brightness just a bit and maybe something like this. Okay. I'm not happy with the edges of the clouds. They are looking too smooth now. So let's apply a curves effect to the clouds layer in the bottom and decrease the brightness to give some detail to the edge. Here I am desperately trying to improve the cloud texture look. And finally I ended up with changing the blending mode to soft light. It helped to blend the textures better. This is without the soft light. And this is with it. So check this out. So soft light worked for the current background. It might not work for others. So experiment it based on your background. I still feel like there are too many clouds. So head into the FG clouds layer and decrease the particle count to even less, maybe 0.05. Okay. There's not much interaction happening between the asteroid and the clouds. And we can also see that the clouds are still transparent, even in the middle. So to fix this, select the clouds layer. Make the alpha channel visible. And it's just the alpha channel in the curves effect. Maybe push this down and push it up to make it dense or opaque in the middle. There you go. The clouds are not completely transparent now. Now select the fire layer and add a set matte effect to it. Select the foreground clouds layer and check invert matte. So what this will do is, this will cut off the fire layer based on the clouds position. Uh, to avoid any color issues, place the set matte effect before the color vibrance effect. There you go. Let's apply the same set matte effect to the smoke layer too. There you go, the clouds are now obscuring the simulation. Okay, now let's illuminate the clouds based on the fire. To do that, select the fire layer and pre-compose it. Make sure move all attributes and name this fire com. Change this back to screen. Okay, nothing's changed now. Head into the fire comp. Uh, okay, why did the name change? Okay, rename this back to fire. Select the VC color vibrance effect and remove it here and apply it back in the main comp. You will understand why in a second. Let's duplicate the fire comp and isolate it. Add a fast box blur before the VC color vibrance effect, maybe a value of 30. Add a glow effect. Increase the glow radius, increase the intensity, and maybe decrease the threshold a bit. Duplicate the glow, decrease the threshold all the way down to zero, increase the radius maybe to a value of 500, and decrease the intensity all the way down. Okay. Uh, okay, maybe decrease the intensity even more. Uh, maybe increase the threshold of this guy here. Okay, that fixed it. Enable the VC color vibrance and okay, we have a blurred fire simulation here. Okay, this is looking too saturated. Maybe decrease the vibrance. Okay, that feels okay to me. Apply a set matte effect and place it before the VC color vibrance. Select the clouds layer as the set matte layer and use the luminance channel. If you can see here, we applied a curves effect outside the comp. So the composition will still have the luminance value intact. So you can use the luminance channel here. There you go. Ah, okay. Let's enable the curves effect and set the blending mode to add. Maybe, okay, position it above the clouds layer and maybe set the blending mode back to screen again. There you go. The clouds are getting illuminated based on the fire but we have a problem here. 
We can see the asteroid simulation even at the center of the cloud, which won't usually happen. So to fix this, duplicate the cloud's comp, delete the curse effect and pre-compose it. Let's head into this comp and add an invert effect. This makes the center portion black and the outside portion white, so that when we use this as a luminance mat, we see the effect only at the outside portion and not at the center portion. So head into the main comp and select the blurred fire composition and select the inverted clouds comp as the set matte layer. And also make sure you include the effects and masks. Apply a cause effect to the inverted clouds comp and tweak it here. Increase the brightness to increase the glow effect, uh, something like this. And as you can see here, we can see the asteroid only at the edges of the clouds and not the central portion of the clouds. So that's exactly what we wanted. We can change the blending mode to add if necessary. Let's select the blurred fire comp layer and isolate it. Apply glow effect to it before the VC color vibrance. Decrease the threshold all the way down to zero and oh. Okay, we have some color issues. That's because of the alpha channel. So delete the glow effect. Apply solid composite right before the color vibrance. Set the color to black. And now apply a glow effect. Decrease the threshold all the way down to zero. See, it works now. Increase the brightness and decrease the radius. Maybe change the blending mode back to screen and unisolate it. Decrease the intensity to reduce the illumination and check this out. Okay. Okay, this looks okay to me. Enable the background plots and check this out. I am settling with this. You can actually tweak it further. So let's add clouds in the background. So for that, copy the FG clouds layer and paste it in the main comp. Place it below and name this VG clouds. Okay, we don't we don't see any clouds here. That's because we need to reselect the texture. Okay, all right. Push it back, uh, first increase the radius to 5 and push it all the way back, maybe a value of 8. Position it outside the frame like before and maybe position it down a bit. Okay. Let's increase the particle count, maybe a value of 0.3 and increase the lifespan, maybe a value of 20. Also increase the Y radius and also position it down even more. So I'm basically filling up the frame here with the clouds. Also move the BG clouds layer a bit backwards to increase the particle count at the start of the animation. Let's also decrease the opacity, maybe a value of 50. Select the blending mode to multiply and then isolate it. Apply a cause effect and make them black. There you go. Okay, let's see this. Uh, okay, the clouds are too small. So what we can do is we can Increase the size of the clouds, maybe to 25. And also maybe decrease the particle count. Okay, that feels okay to me. Um, maybe add a box blur. Okay, this blurs the background clouds a bit. Okay, let's do some color grading. Uh, add an adjustment layer all the way up. Apply curves effect. Push back the red channel just a little bit. Okay, apply transform effect and increase the scale. Maybe to 110. 
Okay, now let's add a camera shake. Add a wiggle expression to the position of the transform. Uh, maybe wiggle 5, 5. Let's check this out. Okay, okay. Maybe we can increase the strength to a value of 10. Okay, that looks all right. And finally, add a chromatic aberration. More or less, these kind of things will be seen through a telescope. So yeah, chromatic aberration is required. Okay, with this, we're done. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more tutorials.